Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. So this is going to be the summary for the actual turn. I forget what turn. It's turn 30. I guess technically part 2, which would be... No, t episode 31, technically. Turn 18, I think. <laughs> it's one of those. Uh, there's still a few things to be done here. I'm just going to go over what is actually going to be happening. And just so people are a little bit more of a know about what we're doing and the reasons why. Uh, of course, Dad Man is ever the wily little... Little uh, rascal, is one way to put it. Okay. So we had previously seen the American carriers. I can't recall exactly where they were, but they were near enough on Tong Java sort of area, around this sort of area here. Uh, he obviously then transitioned over here, which is, uh, to be honest, unexpected. Uh, it was one thing that uh, really we had not envisioned happening. Uh, we thought that, well, I thought he would move south. A lot of it pointed that way, but this is it. This is Dad Man. He's ever tenacious, ever <laughs> the rascal. As I said, he moved both assets, both task forces down here and down this way. Now, the potential threat here that actually lies before us is now Dad Man, what he could do is he could potentially move to a sort of position along this sort of line, something like this sort of line around here. And that would put him in a position where he could actually strike out at shipping in Lay, uh, the Rebal. Uh, in general, he could strike out of the shipping over here. If I go ahead and show this. So from this position, if I take a look, so this is Ocean Deep, bear in mind. It's also an advantage, well, advantageous position because there's corals here that are blocking direct uh, access here. So what we're doing then is we are actually going to have a few ships patrolling this area. I'm going to have the actual light cruisers from over here. The rest will be actually transiting, uh, well, transitioning north. The heavy cruisers and destroyers move them north, get them out of dodge. Uh, other vital assets will, of course, move in as well. The difficulty comes down to, well, only the fast things can move reliably and get out of here reliably. Uh, some assets will have to remain. I'm going to move the fastest assets and have to hope that they do make it out there. There's not a huge amount that will remain in dock, in port here, so ideally that will be enough. We can see that these guys will make a great haste out of the area. They're all moving at at least 14 knots, 15 knots of these guys. Yeah. So they will exit the area. Just ideally sooner rather than later. But we're going to get them moving the heck out of here. Now, there is a consideration to be made for about, uh, well, for having them split into separate task forces. But I think this group will be fine. Uh, due to their speed there, they will be able to move north. He's... Not too distant at 10 hexes, but they should be able to transition quite... Mm, it does make me wonder if I want to move that way instead, actually. I think we just need to move as far away as possible, really. If I can go ahead, maybe set a waypoint. Um, need to go. Just go, 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 go. There we go. So they'll move that way now. I think they can transition through that, uh, over that island there. Yeah, there's no no issue there, so that's fine. And so they'll just move straight and keep moving there. So that's going to get those assets out of the actual area. Now, what we have gone ahead and done, then, myself and Infinite uh, Monkey have, well, we tried to think of a plan. We always try to think of an actual plan and a way to actually approach this. Uh, so what we're doing here, then, is you can see we do have the G3s that were previously in the Marshall Islands. And they've been brought down here. The reasoning being, well... It's a little bit desperate, but we're going to attempt to use night attacks again, as per usual. The Moonlight is... it is a lot... well, it's an increased amount, so hopefully we might be able to make it through there. What we're going to be doing then is trying to use actual bombs here. So you can see that we do have 250 kilogram bombs there, which we'll be trying to make use of. It should be fun. <laughs> Something like that. And give them some extra reserves there, as we have the ability to do so. It will also help out when we actually have to take this squadron back to the marshals. Uh, they may actually be pushing to service tomorrow, we can only hope. Uh, but indeed, uh, we have one group here running naval search at 100%. It's a smaller group, but ideally it should be increased tomorrow. Uh, we have the H6K4s over here that run 100% naval search. Uh, over here at Lay is where things get interesting. I unfortunately cannot. I can't put a part in here, which is a real annoyance. It's, it's kind of annoying. Um, but indeed, we're running here. 10 hates escape falls, a night naval attack. Well, 9 actually, because we don't have a pilot for the 10th, which is really quite annoying. You think you'd just be able to put a pilot in no matter what, but apparently not. Kind of annoying, but ah oh well. 
So these guys obviously will attempt to take two torpedoes each. If we actually do make contact, that'd be fantastic news, but they're going to attempt to strike out there. Something that we're doing as a little bit of a ploy uh, to try and, uh, and, and hit that man, really. Might have these ships just disband in here, actually. They're probably best just get them moving out, so we'll see if there's anything quick that can move out. That would be ideal. Let's see, escort. Uh, you could even move faster than that, to be honest. Uh, I could try and evacuate that ship there, the Lima. May as well do that. They may be able to escape. Just have to hope that they do get indeed lucky there, really. Uh, what I'm going to do then is split this task force up as well. The reason being, you want to try and split these guys up just so that there's more actual targets for the carriers to try and hit. And the thing is, the carriers can only hit so many targets at a time, which is why we previously saw him using just uh, naval surge as a means to actually strike out there. He just doesn't have the ability to hit everything he would <laughs> really like to. Uh, so we're going to go with that then. So they're going to move out that way. What we're also going to do then is, you might notice that there's zeros over here. We have brought the Akagi and the Hiru A672 groups. Now, they do have some reserves, so ideally they will be up to strength tomorrow. But what we've noticed here then is, uh, previously, we're going to be going at 15,000 feet here and 100% uh, cap. Uh, I might have it just stick over lay. There we go. And the reason why we're doing this, make sure that both, yeah, both targeted lay. I could potentially reduce the range there, but I would like them to maybe get in the way. So air, there's 70. 67. That should be alright. Yeah. What we're going to try to do here then, is as we've seen in the past turn, like go down here. Right, here we go. So you saw that these guys uh, supposedly came in at about 13,000 feet. Now that can obviously be incorrect. It could be like 10, 11, 12, or even 13. Could be lower than that potentially, but 13. It can it can be usually a few thousand feet off. So if we're gonna, what we're going to do here then is going at uh, 15,000 feet essentially to make sure we're above anything. And what we've noticed here is you see there's SPDs and just SPDs. SPD2s and SPD3s. I think even on the second attack there might have been an escort but not a large one. Uh, let's see. Try and find it. Or is that the only strike that we saw? And uh, we've seen in early strikes that he does tend to have an escort, usually, but never a very large one per se. Uh, we've noticed that he hasn't run an escort this turn, and that's obviously due to the fact that he hasn't seen any threats in the area. Uh, so what we're going to try and do then is take advantage of that. Try and take advantage of it. Because what we do then is we have, or what we're going to do is we have a large task force over here. Uh, now, this is made up of very low-value VP stuff, but what we're hoping to do here, then, is essentially have the carriers choose a large target and actually try to aim at that, which is over here at Lay. And what we'll do, then, is use Combat Air Patrol, which is more effective than Long Range Cap, and actually have the Zero set to 100% Cap over Lay. The good news is it means that Lay at least has some sort of defenses actually inherently there, which is really nice. And the AMC there should be able to escape pretty, pretty nicely, pretty easily, really. Uh, one would hope so. There is a worry that he could potentially push out further and deepen into the uh, Solomon Sea here, but there's not tremendous amounts I can do about that. Uh, so we'll just try try and get everything out, really. All these assets are turned around and heading their way. There is a danger that he might just head to the Port Moresby area, uh, which is why, well, frankly, I should have things head towards... Uh, uh, let's see... Uh, frankly, should have it head towards, uh, let's say, Belay. Well, we'll say uh, Satawal, Satawal over there. And yeah, they're just going to move north, and so that's probably a better move than in, in general. We have 10 million over here. What I can do is actually have her potentially used here as well. Um, you don't need to head to truck. See, the thing is, the, um, the light cruisers, for the most part, are more or less expendable to a degree. Like, the Japanese light cruisers aren't exactly superb at any rate, so... Uh, what we're going to try to do then is take advantage of what we have here. Now, they're not going to be able to make it to this area... ...tomorrow, but if they actually are in the area and set to naval... 
uh, to combat, sorry, and to reaction, then who knows, they may actually attempt to intercept him. And at the end of the day, if it means that uh, his forces are interrupted, that's a good thing. We'll have to see. The light cruisers aren't the best things in the world, uh, so we're going to make use of them. Like, we're sending Kitakami back there, the reason being, well, we can get her in there, that would be quite nice. Uh, the question comes down to, will he have his forces actually assembled as a single group? Potentially so. But there's still potential for us to get in there. The biggest hope and dream would be that our actual hates escape force actually do launch a strike. See, I have the Jakes over here running Night Naval Search 100%. There's Night Naval Search over here. Uh, of course, the fact that these guys are set to Night Naval Attack, they'll obviously be out there attempting as well. Uh, I have these uh, hates escape force down here at Tulagi running H, uh, sorry, we're in Night Naval Search 100%. So, ideally, we can try and detect him. That would be great. I wish I had Buin as an actual base there, but unfortunately not. I'm sending the subs into this area. Uh, these ships over here are heading into this area. The Kidabatai. Uh, now, the reason that we sent... We were going to send the Kargas zeros, but we didn't want him to actually see that and think, okay, right, he's attached Karga, which means he's going to be running here sooner rather than later, because uh, obviously we'll be moving faster. Uh, the reason why we've chosen those air groups is, for the most part, due to... The fact that they have A5M4s already aboard, so at least they actually do still have some sort of actual cap. Uh, which makes a tremendous difference, it means that they still have the ability to somewhat look after themselves, which is nice. I think what I'd like to do, if I could try and bring them, uh, to be honest, I'm going to be detaching the car in the near future. We should probably head him back towards truck, or to another island nearby, and we'll use that to resize air groups in the area, really. Uh, but indeed... I do worry because we've stripped our naval search over here by the marshals, it is a bit of a worry. But there's not a lot I can really do. I've got to get these assets back. Um, yeah, these subs are moving out that way. We haven't seen anything, which doesn't mean that it's impossible, but we'll have to see. Uh, I'm tempted to bring these subs actually back home. I think I will for now, actually. I'll have them begin to move. The uh, beauty of this is obviously they'll be moving in the direction towards their respective bases. I think the ones that are on patrol will leave as are for the time being. At least I've retained something. Uh, but I want to have these subs actually heading across the area. And we could in truth do with recalling them. They're not doing us a tremendous amount of good right now. In fact, uh... Uh, what bad is it? Do that one. Yeah, I'll recall them. They're going to be covering a decent chunk of the actual Pacific out here. And it's like this. Of course, they do need to eventually return due to fuel issues as well. Uh, so we'll get them refueled, rearmed. Sent out elsewhere, really. I would like to mine K1J. Sorry, I would like to mine um, Wake, which will be happening soon enough. And what I'm going to do then is actually, once these guys arrive up here at Marcus, there's a little bit of fuel available there. And so I'm going to have a patrol boat refuel to actually go ahead. Well, I could even have like a, a... I could potentially go ahead and actually have a destroyer do that. And then at least it can actually move out there significantly fast and pick up that group there. Uh, a couple things would be worthwhile, but we'll see. So we'll begin to have these guys return. I'm looking forward to making use of the midget subs there, to be honest. But yeah, what we'll do then is, as we move them back, is we can actually go ahead and decide where they can actually head instead. Uh, we do have a desire to organize them into divisions, in fact. But it would be ideal to do that once they've fueled. So I think we'll bring them back and then we can actually have them assigned to where their respective divisions will be. Uh, which means we'll have to get ASs deployed across the Pacific to certain bases as well. But it'll be good. Might as well get them moving. They've not. Uh, they've been doing a good job, but they've they've not been tremendously useful so far, really. Had we had more subs, we might have been able to potentially do something. But this is it. Hindsight is, of course, always, 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 always twenty twenty. All right, there we go. Let's see, is any of them going to remain here? Just those two there. But yeah, uh, we can make use of these rowboats. Their range isn't amazing, but I could have them potentially based off of Australia's coast, to be honest. Which would be quite nice. So they're moving back. I'd like to make use of them to potentially uh, mine ports as well, as I mentioned. Um, assets out here are, of course, being shifted. We do have that group there. So I can shift that to truck. 
I'm going to keep up the actual settings as they are for the time being. Due to the possibility he could, he could potentially turn off, it's unlikely, but uh, until he's truly gone from the area, then we've got to make sure we keep up actual potential defenses there. Uh, which is why we're keeping the hxk 4s at uh, truck. I'm sending the actual battleship group, which is over there, to Saipan. Uh, what they'll be able to do then is actually act as some sort of bombardment force or some sort of surface force in the area as well to make use of. Um, I think I'm going to bring... Yeah, okay. Well, these guys can actually head to Saipan as well. And then at least it gives us a little bit more of a cruiser as well, which is always a good thing. Uh, these orders can, in fact, head to Saipan too. I had considered actually having a cruiser off because I can see ships down here, but uh, what I'll do then, due to the fact that he's obviously got strained by geography, is move these assets in towards this area. What I'd like to do as well is uh, possibly move the Dinas so that are over there at Jolo, potentially out at a base over here. But then again, we do have a good coverage here. I might even go ahead and transfer some Dinas over this way to Luzon, in fact. Uh, which would be a pretty good idea, to be fair. Make use of that. Aviation isn't actually here. Make sure they're resting. How long until they're ready? Okay, three days for all of them. You know, a little over snacks, okay. Not long until that group can go back. Batan, Batan, Batan? Really? Free on Batan? Hmm. I must have forgotten to change that. Though, it does look like we have other groups there. Uh, we're going to change our orders actually and begin to march immediately on Clark. Keep up the reconnaissance over this area. In fact, actually, if I can, I'd like to reconnaissance while well, reconnoitre to Cebu. There we go. Keep it up there. Tan, then, I guess. Okay. Uh, we will need more detection over Clark, but again, what I'm going to do then is take a look at certain bases. Like again. Uh, that's too far, is it? Is it really? How far is that? Oh, uh, yes, that is quite far, actually. Uh, deceptively far. Deceptively far. Okay. Uh, there should be other decent bases that we need to take a look at as well. Iola. Ilio. Looks like another one to do so, so we'll do that. Uh, indeed, what I'm going to do then is actually move the Dinas down there to Luzon. And then it means that we have better coverage in the uh, south and obviously in the north as well then. Right. So I'll have you there. There we go. Now repair. Yeah, it gives us a good amount of coverage. It also means that there's also, um, I mean, if you take a look, so from Manila, they're only four hexes. Jolo's 13 hexes, so obviously having that additional naval search is good. You can see that we have picked up on this guy over here, because it's now nine hexes out from Jolo. Uh, what I will be doing then is actually looking towards bringing in some ships back this way. Uh, but we will have some destroyers and battleships actually moving up this way, so what I might potentially do is actually bring something down this way. Uh, but this isn't a terrible threat. I could contain that because I could actually shift air power around quite easily. So uh, there's also Katori over here. Uh, she does need to go to repair actually, but she could be pressing to service at a moment's notice, I suppose. I do have some destroyers over here on Saipan that are actually going to move over here to Babaldo, which actually gives a little bit of surface assets there. So we'll go for that. Uh, what we're going to do then is we are going to actually go ahead and land at Semarinda next turn. I think they will land next turn. Uh, they'll move six hexes, hexes, sorry, so they will arrive next turn. I'm not going to have a BB in there. It seems that Bella Papen, or Bella Papen obviously was mine, as we've actually since found out. Uh, but hey, that was, that was a possibility. Uh, the troops are here. But what we're going to do then is leave this force as is. The uh, damage ships are going to be moving out uh, around and past Jolo. And ultimately, they'll probably head... Well, the actual destroyer, if it survives, will head to somewhere like Pescadores or something of that nature, or even to Saigon, uh, whichever is closer at that time. Uh, the Issei will actually head, well, Issei, uh, will head to Singapore once it's been taken to repair there, really. So I'll have it move to Marie and then skip over here to Singapore. But we'll move from base to base to base, really, uh, seeing how she goes. 
But what I'll aim to do then is likely have the other battleships instead head down here to Baldwarp. And uh, what we'll do then is have the main road to bombard Ambon. I'm going to need some AKs. The AKs aren't too far away, which is a good thing. So yeah, these battleships are going to link up over there as well. The thing is I can't turn around, and the thing is I can't really afford the fuel out here because I don't have any fuel as of this moment. Uh, so we need to carry on moving. Uh, what I've been doing as well is uh, I've shifted aircraft around, which you'll see in just a second. Uh, run bad, but might as well run it heavy, in fact. Uh, so what we are doing then is I've shifted the uh, well, the ki 43 cs over here to Mekasar. I shifted the two zero groups over there from Mekasar to Palembang. So as you can see, we have these groups over here, which I need to give orders to, actually. And uh, we do have the 7th Sentai over here as well, which is running cap at this moment in time. When that's repaired, it's going to head north. Possibly. But for now, it's going to remain here until we actually are ready. Uh, but what I've gone ahead and done then is actually... Uh, so we have the Tainan KUS over here, squadron. Okay? The other squadron has transitioned over here. So I actually need to put pilots in here. Uh, let's go ahead. Um, okay. Uh, which one, really? <laughs> I guess... Um, uh, does it need to be tremendous? I'm sure it's like middle experience, but we'll go with that, I guess. Okay, I'm hoping that I can actually put him into the active immediately. Sometimes it can get funny. And it might be one of those times, but we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be one of those times. Okay. Yeah, and it seems to be weird like that. But then again, I didn't want to put a super good pilot in there. I suppose, well, then again, it's not required as of this moment in time, so I could potentially have that. Uh, changed. Yeah, I don't want to put in super good pilots in there. It's fine for now. It's going to take some days before all those aircraft are ready anyway, so that's okay. It's going to transition north to Bangkok anyhow. Um, oh, this one. Hmm, okay, got to deal with that. God damn it. I guess we'll just go with uh, most experience then. And active. Yeah, there you go. It seems to be if you do it that way, it works. If you do it the other way, it doesn't work. It's kind of funny like that. It is kind of weird like that, but it is what it is. As so what I've gone ahead and done then is the Kaya for the Freeze is actually going to be running the escort of the G4s. Uh, what we're going to be doing here then, uh, you need to go ahead and move to Kuantan actually. But I might as well move you tomorrow when everything else is ready. But then again, no, that's another bomber to hit Singapore tomorrow, isn't it? So, uh, may as well, may as well. To Kuantan you go! I do say, my lad. Right. So, 80% of the squadron, 6% are going to be searching, 80% are going, well, 20% are going to be out there searching. Uh, these other guys are going to be out there actually attacking, so 20% of the squadron will be out there to attack tomorrow. So what we're going to do then is we've got these zeros over here. These guys are going in at 31,000 feet. Uh, the reason is, well, I could go in at 20 and that might be better. It's a bit hard to say, actually. I'm expecting to find the Flying Tigers, so I need to actually be aware of what I'm dealing with, to be fair. So I'm looking for the H81, actually. Let's see. Try and get an idea of what its uh, capabilities are. Um. Uh, H81A3. Oh, okay. Yeah, so its actual maneuverability is kind of trash. That's good to know. So it's 11 at 21 to 31. Its altitude is 32 400. But then again, our, our, our maneuverability is trash there as well. We may go to... Hmm. It's an interesting one because I don't know how high it's going to be, really. Maybe we'll just go for the most maneuverability, really. So, I, I think I might just go with uh, 20,000 feet then. Or maybe, I, I might just have them go high then, I guess. Or maybe we both, maybe we have them both go high. I think we'll both go high. If it means that we actually get the ability to hit them, that's worthwhile. I mean, even if that's on altitude, uh, yeah, no, actually, that's not, not a bad altitude at all, really. 21 to 31 is 21. That's not bad at all, to be honest. It's pretty good. Pretty good, in fact. Uh, so, all zeros are going to be sweeping at Rangoon tomorrow. 
So we do have 34 that have made it here. Obviously, others are at Palembang. We'll be transitioned over here to the north once again. Uh, we do have a couple of reserves I'll be putting tomorrow. But yep, they're going to be going in there to sweep too. So what we're going to be aiming to do then is actually uh, hit his actual ships in the field. Well, ships in the area. And hit his actual cap. And then we can actually start to transition uh, to hitting his actual forces, his actual airfield there. It'd be great once we have more. So I'm going to have these guys actually run a cap. For the time being until I don't need to do it. Uh, they'll train from having cap being flown anyhow, so that's okay. It's just to make sure that we are protected here. Okay. So we do have these Dinas over here that are running. Yeah, we can actually get a couple more in there. We are producing these guys, and these guys are, like, pretty amazing, to be honest. So get a couple more of them. I'm not going to fill up so I have at least some in reserve. Uh, well, actually, no, bugger that. Give them a reserve team. Yeah, so... Um, oh, I need to upgrade that unit there. I think I'll take them back then. And then that means I can actually upgrade another unit. I'll give them one reserve here. At least I can keep that up. But yeah, we'll wait and we'll upgrade that other squadron then. Okay. Yeah, uh, we also do have the G3M2s running search from over here, which is a good thing. It gives us a good idea what's going on. You can see that's 13, which is also 13 over here, which is kind of surprising. And so we'll see, we've got to, we've got to pressure him at Rangoon. We can't allow that to continue any, any longer than it is doing so now. Um, I think it's about time to probably bring these subs. And it's a difficult one, but I'm going to have them actually move into this area. I think what I'll do is have them move off the coast of Rangoon, off the coast of Burma. Have them move out of that area. There are likely going to be other ships in this area over here, but I can't discover where they are right now. Uh, let's see. Don't ask me why there's 40 odd thousand units of fuel here at Victoria Point. No idea. It just moved there this turn, which is kind of crazy. I'm going to have that sub go in there to refuel. Uh, well, in fact... Yeah, we'll just have them move there. I can obviously, um... Make this a little bit better next turn. But I'd like to have some subs operating off the coast of... Burma. In short order, really. Yeah, we'll, uh... Organize that a little bit better later. It'd be nice to get an AS up there, but we can do that in a short... Uh, sh well, in, in the near future we can get an AS there so they can actually rearm. If I can just refuel them, that's obviously quite a good thing there. We'll get them out there. I'm going to rely upon the carriers, honestly, of the uh, uh, assets like naval search in this area. Subs are great, but I need to actually make use of the subs. The thing is, they're not really doing much right now. We know there's targets over here, so I might as well head to where the targets are. It causes him a problem, then. It means that we have to... Well, he's going to have to actually respond to that, which is a good thing. Okay. So, both of us are going to continue patrols here. What I'm going to do, then, is actually split these guys up yet further. It does... <laughs> it does ever so slightly worry me about this, but I think it's completely fine. Okay. Uh... Yeah. They're not going to be too far apart either, which is a good thing. I mean, we do have a surface force there, which is good, so at least I can actually act as a uh, as something to actually intercept anything in the area. And we're going to keep them pretty close by as well. Okay. Zuiho. Alright, there we go. So, what we need to do then... It's set them... About... Uh, around about... I'm going to say about seven apart from each other. Okay, let's just keep that on. It is a dangerous thing to do, but obviously we can link it back up, man. Hard to predict where 7 is there, but we'll try. Uh, 1, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. About there. Move up a bit closer. Move about there, then. Yeah, what we're looking to do here, then, is actually spread out and try to find his other shipping in the area. Uh, what I'm also going to do then is... I'm just going to have to kind of guess that one. About that, I guess. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Obviously, the cows are set to low reaction. Well, sorry, low threat tolerance, which is also good. Uh, what I'm going to do here, then, is they, they can look after each other. They can look after themselves for the most part, which is fine. And what I can do is actually push that range out there to 9, which means they'll be looking out much further. Yeah, they've got zeros, they've got fighters, so they're alright. They can handle themselves. To 9, if even required, to be honest, but it is worthwhile making sure, just in case. But it's in, it's just extremely unlikely. But still worthwhile nonetheless. The good news is I can actually share fighters if needs be. Like have them transition between the carriers. Uh, but what I'll do then... Uh, see, you're complaining right now, but that's okay. I can just have it refuel from the uh, Yamashiro uh, later on. But what I'll do then is have you follow the light cruisers, sorry, the light carriers at the extremity. Have them set like that to react, okay. Right, you're moving there. You're moving there. Low threat threshold. Low threat, there we go. Okay. Tayo moving there. Low threat. We'll go here. There we go. Means we... Well, there's not many bombers on here, actually, but it's still something enough. At the end of the day, if they're actually fine with the enemies, that's fine. Okay. I might be able to fly out some additional bombers in the near future, but that's fine. We'll, we'll find the enemy. Okay, and fly that. There we go. So, have you follow one, two, three, which is the. Yeah, so I need to follow three, three, five. Which is the light carrier. Uh, so, there we go. It means that we'll be pushing out into this area over here. What we'll obviously do then is move towards Victoria Point to refuel. Uh, once Singapore opens up, that's going to be great. We'll also have AKs as well, so I'll be able to do in a few days is uh, push up the abilities rearm further north as well, which is going to be great. We are moving down here to go ahead and uh, Ostha Osthaven will fall quickly. Benkelen probably will take a little bit more. So what I have over here then is I have a couple of subs over here which I need to make use of actually. Uh, these fellows have just begun their march to Osthaven. These fellows. Had a bit of time to rest. Yeah. Uh, but they need to get marching. Hmm. I think I'll have both regiments made ready there. There's still a major road here, actually. I was going to have these guys head towards Oost Harbour, but I think I'm going to have both of them move to Benkelin due to the fact that Benkelin has about 30 odd AV at the start. What I can do then is make sure that march is there. Lahat. Yeah, it's not too far away. I mean, I could march down that way. It's just its secondary road. It is nice. It would be great to take with Harbin. Hmm. In fact, I might as well go ahead and do that. They'll manage. If the help is needed, they'll be fine. Uh, so it's lucky that we haven't lost any progress there, but we'll get marching then. Considering it. We'll be at Jujampe soon. Yeah. Jujampe shortly. 
indeed. Now what we're doing over here then is I'm going to have the tank regiments march north to Malacca. They can probably handle Malacca to be honest. I'm in fact going to save their preparation. I could have that used elsewhere. Uh, but they, uh, yep, they should be able to handle Malacca with it being clear terrain there. The Imperial Guard Division is marching directly towards Singapore, actually. I can probably do a change now of this commander, to be honest, to somebody a little bit more potent. Uh, 10 political points is not a lot, really. Uh, his leadership was better. It's one less land, but admin and... Yeah, admin's better. Aggression's a little bit low, but that's fine. So we'll have Yamada in charge of the PO Guard Division there. There we go. So we're going to march. These guys over here are preparing to march. They're already... They're going to start the march. So what we'll do then is they'll move 30 tomorrow. We'll put them into march mode, which means... They'll, sorry, into combat mode, which means they'll move at uh, 15 miles. Which should take them to... Uh, sorry, 45. Uh, the Imperial Guard Division will arrive tomorrow, and then we'll see where its actual progress is. It might have to stay in movement mode while these guys are in combat mode, and then what we'll do is have them all in combat mode to arrive at Singapore. Uh, which will mean that, uh, very likely, we will take Singapore. It is, it is essentially uh, a certainty at this moment in time that we will take Singapore on the first attack. And which is why we're sending all three divisions to make sure that it is a absolute certainty, and that it will be done. That's what we want there. Okay, you can see these guys are going to be heading north in a few days. Uh, most tomorrow, but the rest are three days out. But that's fine, it gives them some time to rest there. So we're in reconnaissance of Batavia. Plenty of them in reserve, which is great. Yeah, they're going to be running cap. Uh, they're going to continue to run naval search. Okay. We're going to continue to hit the airfield. Hit it from 17,000 this time. There we go. That's quite a bit of fatigue there. You can remain as a cap. Right. Gives them a little bit of time to burn that fatigue. Uh, these guys then have one escort 17. We've got to keep up the pressure on Batavia. Got to keep up the pressure. If we relent, he'll just take that. Uh, he'll just take advantage of it, really. Uh, I could put some extra reserves in here. So we'll sweep at 31. There we go. Yeah, I mean, that's our normal, which is fine. So they're going to go ahead and sweep them. Uh, you can't have any more reserves. You can't have any more reserves. Might as well give these reserves over here, then. It's so fantastic having the ability to produce this many aircraft. It's so very nice. Uh, so, yes, we will be landing at Samarinda tomorrow. We are going to be launching the attack over here tomorrow. Might as well actually add that. Need to continue to unload, so yeah. These guys are going to be moving over here shortly. I do actually have a fleet air, well, an actual air headquarters. Oh, so the tankers are going to be moving over here to Monado. Uh, these guys are going to be heading down there to Melipapan, which is fine. That gives us the ability to attach an air fleet over here, which is great. Now, the air fleet, if I take a look, so 11th air fleet, has a command radius of 5. And that's really handy because that means that uh, Benjamin Arson could actually fly a uh, torpedoable, uh, sorry, torpedoable, a uh, torpedo capable aircraft just. Just for the time being, uh, which means we'd have torpedoes, uh, Megasar, Copang, and uh, Benchmarsen if we need them. Which is nice. I'll obviously have that move out elsewhere in the future. I'm going to have it move down to this area in the near future because obviously I want to build up all these islands. But for the time being, that works out fine. Also, we'll get these uh, headquarters shifted out in the near future. Uh, indeed, so you can see that we do have these assets moving in here. Whether it is enough is going to be uncertain, but I think we need to push on Tarakan. Um, what might be more prudent is potentially to have them link up. Let's see. Do have an amphibious command over here that's Hunter Jolo. Um, okay. 
Okay. I can probably take Tarakan. We'll have to see how that goes. Yep, so it's looking good. It's looking good. We are moving troops over there. Okay. These guys march south to take these bases. Uh, we're just holding here for the time being, but that's fine. It means he's not moving. Uh, we're marching all these forces south, which is great. Make sure they all march. Set all to this ops mode. Set all to march this unit's objective. Yeah, we're planning for Batan, not Clark. That might bite us, but we'll have to just take it. 14th Army. Yeah, I mean, this is it. It's inevitably... Well, it's inevitably going to end at Batan. But if it doesn't, that'd be great. The 38th is going to march this way. So they'll be arriving tomorrow. What I'll do then is have the engineers move up to... Which they are doing. We do have more independent engineers on the wave too, which is good. They'll help us out pretty significantly. I need, um, yeah, so that's a nice and large air base. I'm going to have these guys shift south. Yeah, so for now is a nice base. I might as well just move to Erling Guy and then actually. Yeah, the rest of the second division is moving down this way. But yeah, we'll, we'll march on it with uh, all these divisions. I mean, second division isn't in full strength, but that's still 1,200 assault value. We've got uh, the engineers there, so that's fine. So we'll get them moving there. Additional forces are on their way. Shipping and uh, engineers moving out there. Okay. A lot of fuel to be sent out. Over here, we're moving into position. So you can see we've arrived in position over here. I'm not going to attack as of yet, because I don't want to do so as of this moment in time. I just want to hold that position, moving these guys north now, which is good. Uh, we'll go ahead and chase this position. I do need a garrison there, however, so I can just use a smaller unit to do so. Have you go that way. Uh, it's an annoying bloody unit, but uh, thankfully it hasn't retreated this way. It's retreating into clear terrain, so at least I can move on to it sooner. I mean, this is all swamp, which is terrible. But yeah, you need to head back over here to actually garrison that. Uh, see, another consideration is, uh, potentially after the fall of Ambon, I might go ahead and bring the BBs over here to one car. I'll have to see about that. Um, but indeed, forces are moving. Let's see, is there anything here to load? Nope, nothing at this moment in time. Yeah, forces are moving out. We have engineers moving south, which is good. So we are getting things moving. It was a shame about the Ondo and the AV, but, uh, ideally that'd be the only losses we suffer. But we'll have to see. A great day lies before us. We just need to be brave enough to take it. But indeed, once Singapore falls, we're looking pretty handy there, really. Also, something I'm doing is I'm moving the 56th Division from Kendari over here to Megasar. The reason being, if we take a look over here to Megasar, I actually do have some damage at the port and the airfield. Uh, so, these guys, obviously they're engineers, but they also have some engineers as well. So it helps to build this up, which is a good thing. I think I'll go ahead and send the Naval Guard unit to the north there. I could, uh, I could take, well, probably better off taking the other bases beforehand, really. Yeah, I'll take these via APDs, and then that can't move out, or just surrender. But what I could do then is potentially just move there. That's rough terrain as well. Might as well just wait here, then, haven't I? Yeah, might as well just wait, let them just recover. I can use them to take them past her as well. Now, we do have all these bloody subs over here. The question is what to do with them. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Um, right. Hmm. See, there's a number of ships over here, but I can deal with that using air power. I think what I'm going to do even is actually have them uh, move out here to Bellic Papen, perhaps. Well, no, even even then, that's not too great. Hmm. I'd like to have them head north towards the Andaman Sea, really.
Might as well have them move around. Uh, definitely a case of having sometimes too much <laughs> is a good thing. Uh, we'll have them move this way. And then we'll move that way. Well, in fact, what I'm going to do then is rather than waste the fuel going around, is I'll have them sent to... I could even just have them remain in position, to be honest. I'll just have them remain here for the time being. Uh, they can undergo some repairs and while they are here. Yeah, a little bit of repair work. Might as well have that done while they are here. I could potentially have them uh, loaded up with mines, really, but there's not much I can do out this way with them. They were saying that. I could potentially lay mines here. I think I'll have them loaded with mines and move north then. That's not a terrible idea. How should I have here in rearm capacity? 510 might be able to do it. It's a bit funky, but we'll see. Sub mine line. Yeah, I could potentially. Uh, oh. Yeah, I can't handle the mines. Okay. Um. Well, what I'll do then is, in fact, have them patrol around Singapore for the time being. Still a bunch of ships that could move out of this area, so I might as well patrol for the time being and then move them north. Yeah, I mean, I could send them back out this way, but the thing is, um... I don't think there's really much of a point in doing that. I think what could leave is probably left this moment in time. And uh, it's not like we can't get at the ship in with our aircraft, to be honest. So, I'm not in a terrible rush. I'd rather have them head north, really. Uh, and in fact, uh, I mean, this is a beauty. Once we do take Singapore, uh, we'll have a naval HQ moving in there shortly as well. Is I can have them potentially load mines and uh, move north as well. Maybe make use of them. It's just a question. It's just a. It's just a question of really getting the actual stuff that we need into position. See, I'm not overly fond about having the air, uh, the air regiment, the uh, uh, paratroopers move down to Belle Poppin. What I'll probably do is have them picked up by uh, transport aircraft and potentially made use of elsewhere. Uh, I might find a base I can actually airdrop onto Coco's Island and Christmas Island from, which would be alright. Uh, we are preparing to land, well, to drop at Port Blair, so that's in the process at the moment, that's in the works at the moment in time. So yeah, they can move north. Assets are moving. RTA is moving that way. Yokosuka's over here, which is good, so at least that holds that actual hex there. They can set to be resting for the time being while the rest of their units arrives, which will be tomorrow, handedly. Those, uh, yep, those supplies will move north over here to Bangkok. So that actually unloading over here, which is good. Uh, excellent. Excellent. Okay. A little bit short here, but that unit will increase in power shortly, which is a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Still bombers and Cetra and Visevo can make use of, so that's good. You're unloading these two units over here. I, uh, I guess I'll allow that for the time being. I don't really have anywhere to send them as of this moment in time. Uh, a couple tankers here. These guys are mm, a little bit too important to send. Just done, uh, disband you for now. Yeah, see, so I've got this uh, Summer Fleet Naval HQ. I'll probably move over there as well. It gives us a nice rearm capability, but Singapore's going to be absolutely fantastic when we take that. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, we'll move into Supply, into Marie. We're also pulling out fuel tomorrow, which is good. So that can actually transition to the north. And then what we'll probably do even is have that transition uh, port to port, really. So I could potentially have it moved to Cow. Uh, we're going to have to figure out really how we'll actually have fuel and etc. move, really. But it'll be fun when it happens, in fact. Okay. 
So we are looking pretty good across the Empire. So it's only really here where we're being uh, uh, pushed. Well, pressured, but hey. There's still 37 ships in here, which is impressive. But this is it. When we actually have abilities to throw out torpedoes from Benjamin Marston as well, that'd be great. So there'd be free torpedo capabilities over here, which is great. Uh, what I'd be able to do is move G3s or G4s over here at Palmerbank shortly. But yeah, I'm also control these bases over here, but that'd be good. Uh, actually, in fairness... Um... I was just considering if it's worthwhile moving another group into this area. Once we take Benjamin, I could potentially do that. I will, of course, need actual aviation over here at Benjamin, but we'll have to get on top of that. Uh, so, yeah, it's looking good. Just getting things moving, aren't we, really? Just have to hope for the best that we can get. So, I'll save it here then. Got quite a few more saves, haven't I? <laughs> Indeed. So we'll go with that. We'll be moving into China shortly as well. Things will be rolling there. So yeah, it's been a it's been a summary, a bit longer than I anticipated, really. But uh, you know what I'm like. I can't I can't help myself. I just can't help it. <laughs> it goes on and on. But it's looking good. I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next. And this is it. The pain that we're suffering in the Pacific, well, in the Solomon Sea now, will come to an end inevitably. The carries that movement, he's got to have to bear that in mind, so he will be moving shortly as well. He just cannot risk it. Uh, we'll mount efforts to retake Wake in the short space of time after that then. Yeah, carries moving that way. It'll be, I'd be very interested to see what happens out this way. Be very interested to see what happens. I did consider detaching the Kalaga this turn, but it's one of those of, well, uh, it's not likely that we're going to catch him even with an extra Hex. So we might as well just retain that strength, just in case. And then move towards where the fuel is and move towards where he might potentially head. But we'll see. Hopefully he runs. I doubt he will, but we have a response potentially in mind if he if he does come in. I mean, even over here at Lay, uh, if we can actually shoot down a number of his actual strike strike package power, that'd be really nice, actually. I mean, that, that would be quite good to actually hit his aircraft, if we're going to hit his carriers. But we'll go with that, so thank you for watching there. Thank you. It is always an absolute honor to be able to entertain you fine fellows out there. I'm going to go ahead and say a big thank you to my patrons here in a second, in fact. I'm looking forward, I'm really looking forward to actually being able to clear out um, <laughs> Singapore. That's going to be brilliant. Being able to make use of Singapore will be absolutely amazing. Uh, we'll be in uh, Clark in two days, which will be brilliant. So a big thank you to Mr. Alex Diligent Gravy, Mr. Baines, Bleach Acid, Deepik Duck, Dingo Bat 4, Eric Wild, Eric Justo, Font4123, George Gogol, Gregory Von Hausen, Isaac Chrome, Imperator From, James Lindsay, Lord Luba, Paradigm Blue, Paul Sanders, Raphael, Rick Chambers, Ricky Blinson, Sam Spatch, Stanley Schlav, Sudden Yan, Susanna, and <laughs> I always get the name there. And Daniel. Thank you very much there. I hope you haven't got in trouble yet. Uh, Talon Wanted E, The Forgotten Thunder, and Tim Lindholm. Thank you so much there, guys. It really is awesome. I do really, really appreciate the support that you guys offer. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, if you guys do feel I've actually earned your support, then please do consider becoming a patron. It really does help. It's a payment to the end of the month, which is great. It's one of these things of where PayPal's awesome. There are people that uh, like Tom. Tom for Mang. He's a great guy. He's been back with me for a long time, but he's not a fan of Patreon. But that's fine. But the reason why I, I think I prefer Patreon is it comes out at the end of the month. So at least you guys know it's coming out. And if you need to, you can obviously put it on pause or something of that nature. Obviously, you can alter how much you actually uh, support me with. And it, it's just I just like the fact that you guys know when it's coming out. So it doesn't take you by surprise. You get a lot of time to think whether it's worth it or not. I think it's one of those of where at least there is uh, a good level of yeah ethical back in there. I think it's quite moral. <laughs> please, if I have entertained you, then please do consider it. A dollar makes all the difference to the world, really, in the long term. Thank you so very much. Looking forward to seeing what happens in the future. And it's going to be a lot of fun, I'm sure. I've got to save it, haven't I? <laughs> uh, let's see, then. Hmm. From London to Madrid. Somebody will get that reference. I should have said from... Uh, 
Oh, was it from... Oh, God, I can't remember what it was now. From something to cafe. Oh, from Ireland to cafe, I think it was, or something. The old misdeeds alone. There we go. Thank you so very much. Tenor Heka Banzai. See you next time, guys. Goodbye for now.